Welcome to Chargy Trogs. Let's play DDO. Uh, we're picking up with the second uh, part of our uh, Threnal chain. This is the library Threnal. It actually has three individual quests to this, so this is basically part four, five, and six. Basically, I'm just doing a, uh, each excavation site uh, as like one part. That's what I'm trying to shoot for, and then we'll just go from there. Um, so we have the library Threnal. I'm going to actually run this one on normal just for the heck of it, just to kind of keep it a little faster. Um, not that these things are really that much more powerful and elite at my level, but um, some of these quests in this particular one are escort quests, and I don't want to chance the, the guys from you know taking damage and getting killed, so go ahead and uh, start this one. And we'll go ahead and buff up. Okay, so to find the library of Threnal inside the Eastern Excavation is our quest. Now this quest has variable ways to go. Um, it's a different kind of, more of a uh, convoluted kind of design, so... Um, there are more efficient ways to go and less efficient ways to go. I'm just going to run down and kind of explore all the halls so you can kind of see what's actually in here. Um, this here is a shrine. It's something to be aware of. Wow, I just got a spider creature companion for killing spiders. Uh, must have killed enough of them. I think you gotta kill like 10,000 or something, or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, Alright, so we had like, what, two other ways to go this way, so like I said, I'll just try to show you everything if I can. Now this area here, this is the area that leads actually to this uh, library threnal area. So, just so you know, if you see these kind of blue, um, kind of metal jewel type walls, once you get here, that's that's where you're. That's basically the the right direction, and there's no wrong way, you know, at that point. Um, if you don't if you don't want to go down here yet, and you want to get your conquest bonus, then you can go this way. And just look for more monsters to kill. And again, I'm not 100% sure on the exact amount for conquest bonus. You know, you can find it on the wiki, but I just wanted to show you that there are alternate ways. So I believe this is the way we initially came in. Right, so we can open up our map a little bit, and you can see that this is where we came in, and we came down through here. And that's about it. All this has been explored, so... Anyway, so, so this is the quick route, basically. I think the Southern Dig site is probably the most... Probably the most confusing, uh, more complicated dungeon out of uh, this chain. So just keep in mind that each... Each part gets a little bit more. Denial has evidently unearthed a large section of man-made passages. Yeah, you know, eventually they get a little bit more complicated as you progress through the chain. There's some rust. You hear the loud booming of voices arguing down the hall. Now there are traps here that you want to be aware of, especially when you're uh, escorting in the next quest. We'll be escorting some non-player characters, and they can get hit, so one of those things to be aware of. 
The doors on either side of the hallway are spiked shut. Someone wants to keep you out. Another trap here. Yeah, so I think it's like two blade traps and then the sonic trap. And then, uh... And then we have this uh, fire reaver at the end of it. And if you notice, Arneson, just like the, uh, the the Gygax chain, doesn't narrate every bit of this. There are uh, parts in this that are narrated by uh, another uh, narrator. So, and so that's that. You don't get any end chests here, but there is a shrine if you need to, if you need one. And we'll go ahead and. Uh, our D-door trick. Speed up our loading screen process. Okay, so you go up. You talk to Sal. Though, that's strange. Uh, he has that child service head. I hope that didn't... <laughs> Sometimes I look at that, that child service head and I'm like, huh, oh, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> so usually a quest giver has a, a different child. So okay, so now we have a escort the expedition um, I'm gonna put this one on casual, just just for the completion sake. I don't want these guys getting killed. I'm not a cleric, and I don't. All I have for healing is uh, this healing spring. So, just to keep it simple, you can certainly run this on elite. The beat you hear the sound of dirt shifting and blowing through the excavation tunnels. All right, so we'll buff up. Normally I buff this guy up with my little, you know, this little uh, elemental absorption thing, but uh, for this quest, we need to get at, at least Coil to the end. The uh, The rest of the party, you get a bonus XP, I believe, if you get these two guys there. So um, we want to look at him and see what kind of buffs we're giving him. Make sure he's getting buffed. Yeah, so he's getting buffed. Now, some of these I can only buffle myself, so what I'll do is I'll give him these elemental absorptions. Or, I'm sorry, they're resistances. They basically, are DRs for uh, elemental damages. I'll give him blur so he's harder to hit. I'll give him this absorption clicky, and then we'll uh, buff him up again some more, but uh, for now. Uh, just tell these guys to get underway. And uh, I'm not going to worry so much about these guys, but what we will do give them, give them blur. You know, each of them blur. It's not as important. And then we can do this mass buff. Do some all protections. Uh, it's an extra DR, but it's a uh, more like a uh, temporary hit points against certain elements. And then haste and rage and all that good stuff. We'll do this. And then. Uh, I have this healing spring which lasts for about five minutes, so that's a nice spell to cast on them. Um, you know, just to gives them gives them that extra little bit of um, healing that's coming in, and, and it's it's playing long too as well. So, that's good. so now we have new denizens in this dungeon. These are warforged construct uh, type bad guys. Now we don't have to go that way, so we'll. See if we can get these guys to follow us down this way. Again, it's always good to like look for a coil in the mix of this. Uh, make sure you have him following you. I don't know if I talk to him to do that, so we'll do that. Um, you do not want to leave coil alone. He he will go out of his way to fight stuff, and he will um, also get attacked by respawning monsters and things like that. So yeah, <laughs> keep your eye on that guy. Wow, 12,000 damage that one. That's some old school damage there, 12,000. <laughs> Alright, so now we, uh. Now we get to this spot here, and this, again, this is the room that takes us to the library side. What a, a really good spell for these clay golems is Disintegrate. So if you have that, use that spell. 
Um, other spells will work, but they do have a DR so, uh, on golems, especially at DR, and the clay golems actually get healed when you use um, acid on them, so you don't want to do that uh, if you're an acid-based character. But disintegrate works. guys get down here yeah like I said the hardest part really for this is getting through um, getting through these traps here because you have to get these guys through both these traps and if you don't have a trap smith uh, you probably won't want to run this on anything but casual or normal um, they will take damage so and I don't know let's see yeah we can't get through those yet it's been a while, so I'm a little rusty on some of the, the parts in here. But yeah, anyway, you get to here. Hopefully, they won't die in that turn. There you go. And if you look at their hit points, these are only CR7. So basically, they're set level 7 to level 8 characters here. But now that we've gotten this far, we need to, uh, we need to actually uh, make sure they're all, make sure they're all over here. We got that bonus. Alright, just make sure everything's following me. Coil Trout, the library door is locked. You scout for a way to open it. We'll hold fast here. And you'll see that you can't uh, talk to them anymore to have them follow you. So now we have to find out why these doors are locked. Uh, you know, what is it that we need to do to unlock this? So let me go back. We'll go this side first. Basically, we have here. The monstrosity of earth and stone lurches into. Basically, you have two choices. You know, you're gonna have two levers that we need to. Creature at the end of the hall guards its ground warily. We have two levers we need to pull. So there's one on each side, basically. Whoa! A huge rust monster. <laughs> They're pretty cool looking. Okay, so this door here isn't necessarily important, but there is a collectible in this room and there is a shrine. So, like I said, I, I make it my rule of thumb to always open the, uh, the shrine rooms to make sure somebody needs one uh, and they get separated from you and for some reason they die they can at least take that 10 second run back and try to get in there and you know resurrect themselves rather than being a, a, uh, a hindrance to the party okay so we have this room here uh, you have kind of like two different areas up here of an upper and lower area this upper area has a lever at the end That there, I believe, opens this down here, which is another shrine, if you need one. And then you can see that this is a, a gated area, and there's obviously something down there, but we can't get to it, so we need to figure out how to do that. And then there's... A lot of monsters around here, uh, gargles that get kind of activate by getting close to them. So we'll get that done. Okay. Now, you have an underwater area and you have this area. We'll go ahead and do this area first. Now, this area, the reason we want to do this first is this is the primary, primary part of this, this dungeon. There are optional areas that you can go, like where that other room with the gate I showed you earlier. But this is a primary objective, so we'll we'll do this one first, and then we'll do, then we'll do the optional. So I got two levers here to pull. These levers open this door. Go through this door. Hear 
a brief clatter of machinery, but the noise abruptly stops. Quill shouts, it's no good, the door is still locked. It's no good, that door is still locked. I love that. <laughs> we, there's a lot of us that when we play this game, we mimic certain you know, catchphrases from uh, Quest, and that's, that's one of my favorite catchphrases. Alright, so now that we've got that done, we're going to work on the optional. So we have that gate closed. We have this pool of water, so we jump down here to see what this is about. Look around, and we see a lever. Swim up. And this is open now. And golems are generally pretty uh, weak against disintegrate. So I use Disintegrate. Not necessarily weak against it, but it's a good spell to use on them, I should say. Um, seems to be one of the most effective spells. Okay, now we run over to the other side. Got one door open, and we just need to get to the other one. Okay, this one here, you'll see there's some levers along the wall here, and I think there's is there another one inside here? I can't remember. No. I think it's just for this chest here. Like I said, sometimes I get these, these quests confused with other parts in the chain. Okay, so then, oh, here it is, the lever. Okay. Again, always keep your eyes out for the sidewalls here. Another shrine room. I don't think there's anything else in here uh, in this particular room. And we've got to go down. This room here is pretty cool. It has a kind of an upper and lower area. So you have this upper balcony, and you have this lower balcony. So basically, the way to do this is to, you know, if split up and cover all the levers as quickly as possible as a party, and then everyone meet on the other side. So you could, uh, Send like one guy down there to fight stuff while another person is running up here to pull the middle lever, and another person down here to fight the rest of the stuff. But anyway, point is, there's a. Uh, well, I don't even know if there's anything on this side to fight, but the point is, there's all these little levers, and if you're in a full party, you might as well split up and pull the lever since it's just going to take a few seconds to pull each one, but not a big deal. Okay, so we have this lever. An ear splitting crack shatters the air, followed by the rattling of rusty chains. Coil shouts, That's done it! Doors open! Again, another uh, catchphrase we like to use. That's done it! Doors open! <laughs> Good stuff, right? So now we go back through all this again. Climb back up here. Make that jump up there or not? It's probably too far a jump. I'm gonna try to catch this ledge here, but I've never tried that trick. It's just something I thought of right then when I was running around just to save some time.
Okay, so we made it this far. Now we gotta go down here. And there's coil. Coil level screams by the sovereign host. There's a fire reaver in the library. Get ready to fight. I'm gonna just zap him with that. Fossil his horror right. the final blow lands. This isn't finished. Okay, so we did all this. Now the next quest is gonna actually be in this room, and you won't be able to get out of this room. It'll be locked shut, you'll be in here, and you'll have to protect this guy right here. And he's only level eight and he's pretty squishy, so um, even at level, it's just really annoying to protect him, but we'll see how well we do. <laughs> we'll see if we can get that one done. Alright, so you go back up, talk to Sal. Use diplomacy if you want some freebies, I'll give you a potion or two. And then we go back down and enter this on casual. I would recommend casual, even if you're really experienced. It's just the guy is a pain in the butt <laughs> to keep alive. So we'll bring him in. I'm actually probably going to bring in some hirelings just to make it a little bit more entertaining and give us some company because it's basically a 15 minute quest. We'll cast an ice storm and we'll uh, talk to Coil, we'll bluff him, and that, what that'll do is put him asleep, and then uh, we're gonna blur him and give him all kinds of anything we can give him, you know, haste, rage, everything, and we're gonna tell our hireling to guard him, and we're gonna tell this guy to guard. Him. Cook a firewall over him, and we'll put a disco ball. This is a auto sphere of dancing. We'll put that over him, just maybe to help out and crowd control a little bit there. Um, and then what else I have? Find it. So I have I hit my many hot bars here. I don't know if it's down there or not. Or I had another hireling. Oh well. We'll just leave that on there. But basically, you get the idea. Keep this guy safe. Another thing to do is to give him invisibility so that they can't see him. And uh, it's just a nice thing. Now, there are some good spells to use for this. Um, um, one of the good spells is uh, put up something like that. Um, you can put some mind fog up. That'll make it harder for them to make saving throws. You can put web and disco ball. Uh, but again, the point is, is you want to keep um, you want to keep them protected. So make sure everybody's guarding them, and just keep your eyes out for bad guys. They come in like little waves, so it's just really annoying. The, uh, and it's this quest really. It's so annoying that they really should just change it to about a, a five minute quest. Yeah, I was looking for uh, I don't see it in here. I was looking for a hireling companion thing that I had. Oh, there it is. This is one more creature I can bring in to overkill this. So I say here kitty kitty. Come on over here. And we'll actually park him maybe about right here. And we're gonna have him guard that as well, so And you can see like the, the gargles up there. And, uh, I 
guess that's a Bastool. Bastool. The Fire Reaver. I know this is overkill, but this is just one of those quests you just do not want this guy to die. Actually, I probably will cast. We got enough time here. I'll cast a healing spring on him as well. There's one, one of the reasons I like playing this character is that I have a lot of mana. It only costs four spell points to cast an unmetamagic magic missile, 15 for the chain missiles. I also have enhancements that allow me to cast a uh, two spell point one and a 10 spell point one. And uh, so I, I, I've never really run out of spell points in these characters. As long as I just keep using magic missiles, um, generally I, I have a lot of uh, spells at my disposal. A lot of SP at my disposal. Um, so one of the reasons I like playing Pixie so much. <laughs> and uh, because you're in Sharati, you get this Prism uh, stance that gives you extra damage and random uh, things can affect uh, the enemy. Um, I have like uh, a Nerve Venom that you'll see often when I hit something with my magic missiles or any of my spells, uh, especially I guess it's range spells, uh, it'll allow me to uh, basically paralyze the uh, enemy. So there's a random chance that something will get you know, frozen in place and can't move. And this character can self-heal because she's a lich and she has death to her, so that makes it pretty crazy and powerful. So we're nine minutes into it, and you can see how much fun this is. <laughs> this quest should be a lot, a lot faster to finish. Maybe a, a shorter quest duration, about five minutes, would be more than adequate. <laughs> if you're on a melee character um, and you're doing this at level on elite, I can say that's really hard. Uh, unless you have a hireling, and even with a hireling, it's pretty difficult. We can have some fun here. We can do some sleet storms, you guys. Anyway. And then I have uh, I have grease spells. You want to really have some fun with them. Grease is a, is a fun spell. It's one of the few AoEs that actually affects people in your party. So they have to make a saving throw. If they, don't, if they don't have freedom of movement or immunity to slippery surfaces, they'll slip and fall. Oh, Quill's up. So anytime you see Quill get up, bluff him, tell him to get back down on the ground like a good boy. <laughs> Got some good spring on him. Sure, everybody's guarding them. Just double check. Follow me over here. Yeah, she did more damage than I did, probably. I was just gonna see if it'd slip and fall. It's kind of fun to watch. Still have one more over here. We can try it on. Yeah, 
Yeah, I just get kind of bored on this kind of quest like this, you know. Uh, so I just like to try goofing, goofing around with the, uh, with the mobs. Like here comes a rust monster, she zapped them. I see the dogs are dancing. Ah, I got her to fall, that's good. That's fine. Check his buffs out real quick, see how they're doing. So we'll go ahead and uh, have some more healing strength. This is the, like I said, the most probably the most dreaded quest in the game. Mainly because it's so boring and uh, oil is so squishy. If you run this on elite at level, um, there's a really good chance that you will die unless you're in a full party or a pretty good sized party. You know? uh, it's a lot easier to run than it used to be, though. There's a uh, there's a lot of little hirelings and things you can get now that are have smarter UI or AI and uh, smarter um, capabilities. You know, so that they, they won't just run off and do their own thing as often as they used to. <laughs> it used to be hirelings would do some silly stuff. But this uh, disco ball is one of the most effective things I've seen in here uh, as, a, as a spell. Oh, <laughs> oh Coil's up too. Hey Coil, get back to where you were. Two more minutes. Yay. <laughs>
Okay, so we're getting there. We've got 30 seconds to go. <laughs> but yeah, this, I know this is a boring quest. What I, I might do is, I don't know, I'll have to decide. I might just do like a fade. I might make the recording and fade through this so you don't just see it all. Okay, that's it. Quest is done. Turn the firewall up just for fun. Victory firewall. Got another topaz. That's nice. And so we wait for the quest to finish. Alright, and we get the heck out of dodge. <laughs> and Dedor will take you right back to the center of the quest. So, so uh, I'll try something like this, just in case something tries to hit me while I'm going out. And we go up to Sal and talk to him. And you get a choice of some things. Now this is a nice item because you can use this for your uh, Kenneth crafting, uh, for your you know uh, crafting. Which uh, I'm like level 150 right now, I think, in my Kenneth crafting. So, uh, but it's a nice thing. You can make a lot of very nice handcrafted items. Uh, so looking at the list, I'm gonna definitely take that. And he'll say you want to repeat this, and you do not want to repeat this. But you will ask him, is there anything more to do here? And uh, and he'll tell you to talk to Zariva. Or Zavira, I guess. And then you go to Zavira for the next part of the chain. So that was the hard part. That's really the hardest quest in the game, is that coil quest. I made it look like it was easy because I had on casual with a max level character, but that quest, if he... Basically, he can get hit about three times, and he's dead. And a lot of times you don't notice him get up and take damage, or his initial hit, he'll get hit uh, by an enemy initially, and that'll wake him up. So he's already taken some damage, and then he'll get up, and by the time he stands up, he'll take another hit. And then he's, at that point, either dead or almost dead, and then he'll take one more hit. So I think they did make him a little bit more survivable than he used to be but not by much, you know. So, all right, we have this quest, and uh, when we come back, we'll pick up on the third part of this chain. This is the Southern Dig site, so uh, stay tuned for that.